Saturday, everybody. How's the weather out by you? This is your boy, Money Flippin' Matt Richards, hoping your weekend got off to a really good start. Oh, yeah. Also, if the video's not working, click out and come back in, okay? Everybody good? Sweet. All right, did you stay in and relax? Take care of some housework, run some errands? Or did you go out and protest? Like so many people in America and all over the world did. I'd almost forgotten what big crowds looked like until everybody turned up. It's pretty dope. Yeah, but however you got through the day, there's one big challenge still in front of you. 12 titanical trivial trials culminating in a $5,000 prize pot. Will you be placed first or disgraced and cursed? And as usual, we're giving some love to a terrific charity making a big difference in tough times. Tonight, it's Friends and Family Meal. Helping hospitality workers during a devastating time for their industry. Communities all over the world are affected by COVID-19. With hospitality workers hit especially hard, Friends and Family Meal is a nonprofit founded by two restaurant veterans in Washington, D.C. to take care of people who take care of people. Through partnerships with the beverage industry and personal donations, they provide affected, affected hospitality workers with nutritious food sourced from local farmers who therefore also benefit from the hard work done by Friends and Family Meal. That's right, that's why we love it so much, we're donating $5,000, and actually, here's some nice words from their founders. Take a look at this. Hey, HQDs, I'm Morgan Stana. And I'm Mike Alves. We're two longtime HQ players and want to thank HQ for allowing us to continue our mission. We founded Friends and Family Meal, a nonprofit in the Washington, D.C. area that purchases produce from local farms and then distributes them to people out of work due to the COVID-19 crisis. We want to give a big shout out to a lot of our volunteers who are playing HQ for the first time tonight. For more information or to donate, please visit us, visit us at friendsandfamilymeal.com. Uh, be safe, wear a mask, and remember that we're going to get through this together. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for everything you're doing, Mike and Morgan. And yes, you can donate right now with the magic of the donation button. Tap that button to give $5 to Friends and Family Meal automatically through Apple Pay or Google Pay. Making a positive difference doesn't get any easier than this. Woo! The button just debuted this week and already we've raised thousands for some truly worthy charities. We can't thank the HQ community enough for all the help that y'all have provided. Thank you, babies! Real quick, uh, can we throw up the website one more time? Just wanna make sure everybody knows where they can go. Go. All right, that address is friendsandfamilymeal.com. Visit and, and maybe give something if you can. Open up your wallet, all right? I hope you're all fired up for the game. We have questions tonight on history, children's literature, books for the children. So many topics. All right, take a deep breath. Let it all out. The big moment is imminent. Tilt your head back and forth. Get your brain all nice and loose and Rubbery feeling? You're gonna need it flexible for the twists and turns ahead. Question number one is coming up right about now. Remember your favorite teacher, everything they taught you. Remember what life's taught you, okay? There's so much knowledge in the universe and you got a lot of it. So here we go with question number one. What chemical element is number seven on the periodic table? Nihilism, Knight Rider, or nitrogen? You won. Starting off a little easy for you. All right, we don't ask HQDs to memorize the periodic table. We always try to make Q1 something they can answer. And there was a little hint during the message from Mike and Morgan. The CZ, yeah, this is the screen grab. The answer to question one is nitrogen. Woo! How y'all like that? We're gonna be doing a lot more H clues hidden for yous. Trying to keep you sharp. 
62,641. Got it right at Q1. I love to see it. You love to see it. Question number two, here we go. A jacket's lapel is closest to what other part? Collar, sleeve, or bottom edge? A jacket's lapel. Who do y'all know who has a jacket all the time? We don't use this term all that often, but you see in mind clearly every episode of this show. Now, since the chat is covering the sleeves, all right, here and there you might have gathered that a lapel uh, is where the collar continues down the jacket and folds out. Collar, baby, is the answer. 59,793 in the place to be. Got it right. Let's go. Good job. I'm so proud. Y'all know things. High five. Boop. Okay, here's a question in animation. Which network devotes its entire Sunday night lineup to animated shows? CBS, Fox, or NBC? What's it gonna be? Ah. All right, any network will tell you when you have a hit, you gotta order eight or 10, just like it, okay? And three decades after its premiere, The Simpsons and many shows inspired by it are a full night of programming for the Fox network. What does the fox say? Hotty, hotty, hotty ho! 54,935 got it right. Fox is the answer. They got their Sunday lineup with The Simpsons and all the other cartoons. Not necessarily for the children. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, earlier tonight, we promised something to the fans, all right? We said if y'all gave us 1,500 retweets, you came through. So here's that gift drop for you. You earned it, babies. Tap it like it's hot. Woo, tell us what you got. Even though there's no surprise. You earned this. Everybody gets two extra lives. Every gift drop's got something in it. Oh, the what? The love. The love. Feel it. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Here we go, question number four. Knocking on your door. America's most produced sweet cherry is also what recurring word in Groundhog Day? Bing, Philo, or Stella? What's it gonna be? All right, you may not know every cherry cultivar in America, but don't tell me you don't remember Ned Ryerson, okay? Needle nose Ned, Ned the head. Phil's high school classmate, when he's excited, like you should be if you got this right, he yells out, I think we got a clip, let's show it. Well, Ned Ryerson. Bing! Bing! <laughs> the bing! Yeah! 43,936, and it goes a little something like this. On the way to question number five. Here we go. This question is in outer space. Which of these objects is farthest from the Earth? Asteroid belt, Mars, or Jupiter? 10 seconds ain't enough time to grab a telescope, but uh, hopefully you got this one in your brain stash. Cool, cool. Our solar system has its own asteroid belt. It keeps Imperial Star Destroyers out while acting as a barrier between the inner solar system, which ends at Mars, obviously, and the outer, which begins with the farthest object, Jupiter, where boys go to get more stupider. Y'all saw that big old red spot? Mm. Like my planets, like, I like my... Uh, hey, I'll leave that up to you. 40,510, you did it! Good job, stargazers and planetarians. Question number six, let's go. It was still hot are the last four words of a children's book by whom? Ezra Jack Keats, Maurice Sandak, or Dr. Seuss? All right, a simple line that, that shows among other things, how play can alter our perception of time. After an epic adventure to a foreign land, Max's soup is still hot at the end of Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. He went out, played with the wild things, came back home, soup is still hot. That's crazy. 28,423 got it right. It's too hot. The soup was too hot, baby. Soup temperature didn't change. 
It's lit. That's because he wasn't really going that long. But it felt okay. Question number seven. Here we go. Classic video games coming right up. The Celtic goddess Epona lends her name to what in the Legend of Zelda series? Horse, instrument, or tree? All right, Epona was introduced in Ocarina of Time, considered one of the greatest games that ever was. But even if you never played that blockbuster, you might know that Epona was the goddess of horses in Celtic myth. There's Link and his pony. Hello! Ocarina of Time! Hey, Ocarina, all right! 29,093 in the place to be. Hey, question eight. All right. That's the fastest Macarena I've ever done. What up, Nate? My number. Woo, so refreshing. Here we go, question number eight, babies. Which of these is an example of spoonerism? A, a fit bunny, God shave the queen, or Oxford Don? I love these word questions. They make you think, they make you think. And it's great to think. Thinking is lit. Okay, here we go. Woo! The Reverend Spooner was indeed an Oxford Don, but his namesake is a form of wordplay, intentional or accidental, where the beginnings of words are switched with each other, which can be a bit funny, or should I say a fit bunny? A fit bunny? Holy savage! 7,229 players got it right. A lot of y'all were like, I don't, I don't, I don't. it's fine, it happens. That's what extra lives are for. Drop them like it's hot. Over 13,000 extra lives just got into play right now. That keeps you in the game. Whoo! <laughs> I like it, I like it a lot. All right, here we go. Y'all ready for this? A history question. What kind of laws did Homer Plessy end up affecting when he stepped onto a train in 1892? Vehicle safety, segregation, or robbery? Homer Plessy was an African American who decided to protest the whites only cars on railroads. And the Plessy v. Ferguson verdict would shape segregation laws for years to come. Segregation is the answer I was looking for. What did the people say? All right, I like to see that. 17,000 know your history. Be proud of yourself. 17,079 got it right. You're on the right train to question number 10. Time to get it in. Let's go work. Mm. All right, Q10. The mutant warthog in Ninja Turtles cartoons is named for a music form originating where? Jamaica, Cuba, or USA? Go Ninja, go Ninja, go! All right, obviously when you mutate into a hybrid animal, you need a nice music genre for your name, okay? The mutant rhino picked rock steady after a cool forerunner of, of reggae, and the pig went for bebop. That's a jazz style starting right here in America. America! Look at him. That's Bebop. Come on now. Scoop the Bebop a do that do. Oh! Holy savage! What are you? Oh! Ha! How does that even happen? Holy savage! Come on! Who writes these? Geniuses. 1,554. Players got it right. A lot of extra lives getting dropped right now, too. Woo! Woo hoo hoo! That graphic is ridiculous. <laughs> 4,300 extra lives in play right now. Oh boy, question number 11. We got two more till the jackpot gets divvied up to the HQTs and doing their duties. Oh yeah! 
I feel so excited right now. All right, here we go, question 11. The lowest point on Earth's surface does not touch what country? Israel, Jordan, or Lebanon? We're going around the world on this one, baby. Okay, if you want to get as far below sea level as possible without inhaling water, try the shores of the Dead Sea. It's so salty, it's almost impossible to sink in. And it helps beautify the Israel-Jordan area. Lebanon is to the north. If you pick Lebanon, you're moving on. 4,952 players are moving on to the final question of the game. Onward to victory! You made it this far. Shout out to everybody still tuned in, watching for the win. And if you've made it this far, congratulate yourself. Get ready. Let's, let's take a moment to call on all our knowledge for this last question. HQSA. HQSA. It's like WUSA, but themed to this game. Here we go. Question number 12. Which of these jump attempts by Daredevil Evil Knievel was successful? Caesar's Palace Fountains, 19 Cars, or Snake River Canyon? What is it going to be? Boys in the 70s lost a lot of skin on their knees imitating Evil Knievel on their bikes. Yeah, not just the 70s. I remember I tried to take a, a, a mountain bike off a dirt hill Called myself Chocolate Evil Knievel. Messed up my collar. That was terrible. Anyway, they hardly cared because Evil's failures were just as famous as his wins. Although he did make it to the other side of a 19 car lineup. If you pick 19 cars, you just won HQ Trivia! Woo! Wow, come on now! Let's go! 1,225 players just did it. Blast off like a rocket ship. Woo! Oh, I feel pumped. I feel jazzed. I'm about to beep up. Dance around. You beat the savage questions. Congratulations to, to everybody. Armilo, TN97, Robin. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> I was like, this is my week. Uh, <laughs> Doug Diden, Mathis. Eric Lang, Bozy Boy, Black Oboist. That, I mean, I, yeah, it, they exist. Kalia, enjoying some sun. Robbo, Hunter Mo, Wertham. Robin5987, Turmp. Oh. So ends one more spelunk through the caves of trivial knowledge. And yeah. We're gonna be doing this again tomorrow night. Same time, same app, okay? So come on by. Bring a couple of your smartest friends for maximum earnings. Love to see it. Once again, that charity we told you about earlier, friendsandfamilymeal.com. Bringing food from local farms to hungry hospitality workers. Check them out, give if you can, okay? Until next time, this is Matt Richards quoting the words of James Baldwin. I love America more than any other country in the world and exactly for this reason. I insist on the right to criticize her perpetually. <laughs>